do you handle an epidemic in the age of fake news? There are the carefully orchestrated official messages. I fully understand public concern. Science-based, driven by expert advice. Currently, the evidence from China, at least, would imply that children have much less of this disease. Backed up by advertising and the mainstream media. But then there's the lies, rumours, theories that spread at speed around social media and the internet. A new challenge for governments treading the line between information, preparedness and panic. You can never prevent people from panicking or from speculating about possible causes, particularly in health uh, situations. However, I think that what we are seeing is a much more proactive stance uh, from some of the social media companies uh, compared to what we saw in response to disinformation in elections. About the battle against an infodemic is one the World Health Organization has been fighting. It has reportedly held meetings with tech groups like Facebook, Amazon and Airbnb about providing accurate information. Today, Facebook's founder pledged to act, offering free adverts to the WHO and saying they would remove false claims and block exploitative ads. If the social media platforms can do this now, it does raise questions for their future about whether they are bringing themselves into much more into the establishment, much more into the role of, say, a, a broadcaster that has to take responsibility for what's on their platforms and the effects that it has. But another weapon against the spread of fake online news is governments themselves. The provision of clear, credible information is a crucial part of the battle. Well, a closed strategy is something that nobody recommends. What people recommend is empowering the population by helping them understand what's going on and what they need to be watching out for in order to prevent themselves from getting um, infected and to prevent others from getting infected from them. So it's really openness that is necessary in these outbreaks. We have contained this. We have contained this. I won't say airtight, but pretty close to airtight. What does that mean for countries where leaders have seemed keen to play down the seriousness of the situation? Now the Democrats are politicizing the coronavirus. You know that, right? Coronavirus. Think of it. And this is their new hoax. Nonetheless, the Trump White House says it took strong action early on. And in truth, Western democracies are generally pretty good at disseminating information to their citizens. The US administration's policy advisor told Newsnight that he questioned whether Iran's tight hold on information had exacerbated the spread of the disease there. The regime um, did delay telling its own people uh, about the outbreak of the coronavirus. And as a consequence, um, people didn't take the necessary precautions. And today, Iran has the highest death rate in the world of coronavirus. I, I saw an interview with a doctor in the Khuzestan province who said that the regime covered it up for a month. And then, once, the, uh, once it was clear that they had an epidemic, the regime wasn't prepared for it. If faith in politicians, or indeed the media, is important in a public health crisis, COVID-19 perhaps hit at the wrong time there is still an inclination to look in some odd places for answers. Look, what I don't like in life is that um, a very serious thing, a football manager's opinion is important. Politics, coronavirus, why me? I wear a base cap and uh, I have a bad shave. The challenges have barely begun, but this new virus could also raise some very 21st century questions about the gatekeepers to information in a crisis and ultimately about who we trust. Joining me now is Victoria Baines, a former Facebook trust and safety manager, and Anna-Sophie Harling from NewsGuard, an online browser extension which reports on digital misinformation and monitors news websites for reliability. And Anna-Sophie, if we start with you, uh, you've been having a look at in inaccurate sources of information online when it comes to coronavirus. What have you found? 
So we've seen that overwhelmingly um, users around the globe, when they're going on sources um, like Facebook and Twitter, are accessing what we would call red-rated sources or unreliable sources of corona information. Um, we've seen uh, that sources like the WHO um, and the US's Center for Disease Control um, have amassed uh, shares and engagements on Facebook over the uh, last couple of weeks. Um, around 34,000, whereas the red-rated health sources that are spreading coronavirus misinformation have amassed something like 52 million engagements. Um, and that's quite shocking. We're seeing similar numbers coming out of the UK. Um, despite Facebook's best efforts, the NHS um, website is not receiving much traffic um, in the UK, as opposed to some um, US red-rated sources, actually, that we're seeing being shared widely in the UK. Victoria, Facebook's made this announcement, but how easy is it for them to take down this sort of information, misinformation? From what I understand and from what we've seen, reporting and, and taking down the material when it's been reported is just one of the measures that companies like Facebook and I would say also Google with Google search and with YouTube that are, they're taking at the moment. Um, they're working with the World Health Organization and with the NHS, so they have a hotline, if you like, from those official sources, but they're also promoting those official sources. So people logging into Facebook today and using Google search today will have noticed that there are SOS alerts at the top of their news feeds and on their search pages when they search for coronavirus. Then behind the scenes, there will also be another approach to try and investigate, identify and remove some possible sources of coordinated disinformation, which is something that President Putin, of course, has alluded to today. It's not impossible that hostile actors will be looking to sow disinformation deliberately. I mean, from what you're saying, Anna-Sophie, the misinformation is spreading almost as quickly as the virus. I mean, we've had a look. I mentioned some of them earlier, but, you know, anti-vaxxers talking about this being a weaponised yeah. disease, yeah, a weaponised, you know, issue, you know, that it's going to undermine Brexit. All sorts of kind of crazy ideas are out there. It's just spreading. Yeah, and um, it's not new. Uh, coronavirus didn't cause misinformation. Online misinformation and disinformation has existed um, for about as long as the tech platforms have existed, right? And um, what we're seeing is that this is being brought to the foreground, that the tech platforms are really taking action now. Um, but what we at NewsGuard would like to see is that these sorts of actions, um, promoting quality content and bringing greater transparency uh, to the platforms, educating consumers about how to locate quality sources, this is something that should extend beyond coronavirus. Um, it's really the kind of actions we would want the tech platforms to see every day, to empower consumers with quality information. You touched on it earlier, but is it more Russian bots, for example, spreading these conspiracy theories, or more people who are misinformed and just putting things that are wrong online? So far, we've not seen a lot of evidence of Russian bots, although that may emerge over time. Um, to follow on from what Anna, Anna Sophia was saying, that what I would really like to see is much more uh, responsibility from members of the public to check what they are seeing because there is a very good analogy between cyber security and the spread of infection. It's not for nothing that we talk about computer viruses spreading and, you know, computer infections. Um, I would like to see people taking responsibility for what they share with their friends and family in exactly the same way as we talk about not spreading coughs and sneezes. I, I would just like to add to that, um, that when you give people that responsibility, you also need to give them the tools to make informed decisions. Um, and I think that's why it's really important to educate online users about how to locate quality sources, um, how to identify for themselves, um, for example, who might be behind a certain website, what might their motivations be. I mean, aside from bots and from sort of foreign-born propaganda, what we're really seeing in terms of online health mis- and disinformation are malicious actors who take advantage of the fear and the hysteria surrounding coronavirus right now, or vaccines or any kind of health issue, in order to turn a profit. So they might be publishing false information to get ad clicks, or they might be simply trying to promote a certain product, often times that can be quite harmful product. So you do need to teach people to think about what is this person trying to get from me? Why is this message coming across? And are they trying to motivate from my attention or from uh, my fear? And how likely is it that people will realise they have to self-regulate and that they will have the tools to do that? 
That's really challenging, actually. Uh, we, we live in an environment where um, we are encouraged by our online interactions to click now to click on an offer now, to click on an ad now. So delaying that gratification is one of the challenges that those of us who work in cybersecurity have. It's, it's why we have a challenge stopping people clicking on links to malicious software in phishing emails, for instance. So it is, it is very much the, the holy grail of, of cybersecurity. Um, but I think I would also stress that we have that promotion of the legitimate material. So some of those hoaxes should be pushed down, downranked by the promotion of the legitimate material. Victoria Baines, Anna-Sophie Harling, thank you so much.